Welcome back. Welcome back. I am so sorry that I've been gone. Today, we're going to finish up on the Warhammer 40k factions. Well, maybe not finish up. We're going to continue on with the Warhammer 40k factions. I apologize again for leaving you. Will not happen again. Crazy, crazy stuff happened. Illness first. Then this month happened. My daughter turned 18. And then she also is graduating high school. And I've been dealing with T-ball for my son. Who just started that. So things have been insane. Let's get into it. Bugs. Bugs. Oh, they following me, Ma. They following me. Who's following you? The bugs. The bugs. <laughs> the Tyranids. <laughs> now, you want to talk something a lot more fun? Okay. Uh, the Tyranids. Tyranids, for me... I know that they were, I read the books, some of the books with them in there, and I also remember them and being, were they in? I don't remember if they were in uh, any of the Dawn and War games. I think they might have been. I do know this fun little factoid about the Tyranids is that, um, what the, do I know anything? Do I really know anything? I guess I don't know anything. Uh, Starcraft. Starcraft is that <laughs> was talking. Oh man, it's been too long. Uh, Starcraft was a Warhammer game. That's why the Space Marines and that, and the Tyranids, which would be I forget what they're called over there. They look so similar. That use that was supposed to be a Dawn of War game. Starcraft. So that was pretty cool. I could have, you know, they stopped at two, right? And people still play those. It's interesting. I had fun playing those when um, we used to play that on the N64. You had to get the expansion pack, little drop-in thing. That's how old I am. I'm dating myself like crazy, just so you know. I'm, everybody's going to know how old I am. <laughs> used to get those little things, and you Put them in the N64 in order to run certain games that were much bigger for whatever reason. And that was one of the games we used to play. That was a lot of fun. I really wish I still had that shit. Uh, but that's that's the kind of the majority of how I know these guys, the Tyranids. Other than they freak me out. I don't like them. Bugs are okay, but these things are kind of gross. I have... I have a thing that's a new thing, like a new fear, and that's like holes, just like geometric holes in things. I don't like. I don't like it. I don't know where it came from, but I have a fear of it now. I don't know where it just, it's a random thing that just started happening, and now I get freaked out and kind of nauseous when I see pictures or videos and they got holes thought of it right now is making me a little queasy so just so uh. fun a little more simple than all this crazy eldar shenanigans let's talk the tyranids let's do they're it. bugs do they look like zerg hell yeah they look like zerg that's, you know, the that's, wild the, that's the name of the bugs from starcraft he's i bet he's gonna talk about it i bet he's gonna talk about how starcraft was supposed to be a dawn of war game zerg because they were actually supposed to uh, be what zerg were uh, apparently StarCraft was supposed to be a 40k game in the beginning, hence why they look so much like Eldar, Zerg, and the Imperium of Man. Like, kind of space marine -y. those mm -hmm. marines, huh? They look a little bit space marine -y to really? me. Really? Maybe. I don't know. You really fucked up on that one, Games Workshop, didn't ya? Tyranids are a giant infestation of un fathomable proportions. These are giant, extremely bio-advanced hive mind organisms that are basically all about absorbing as much biomass as they possibly can to evolve and mutate to be extremely potent and powerful and kill and eat anything in their path. They are probably the least evil faction in all of 40k because all they want to do is eat shit. They want to om nom nom the entire game 
galaxy. They <laughs> hangry and we food. Also, this Tyranid hive mind has a presence in the warp. In fact, Tyranids in their own right have a massive presence in the warp. They have a thing called the shadow in the warp specifically, where when they are coming in to invade a planet, they have this weird ability to kind of cut off the warp on all the psychers on that planet. And how do you get help across the stars? Well, you need the warp because you need that for interstellar travel. So with people unable to call for help from the Tyranids, these are just easy pickings. And an entire giant Tyranid hive fleet comes out of orbit and just will massacre, absorbing all that biomass and turning them and all of their other Tyranids into even more advanced monsters. They come in so many varieties too, all in, based on what is important. Tiny little ripper swarms for scouting and having little dudes eat people up to the Hormagons, Termagons, and Gene Stealers, all the way to the Hive Guard and the Exocrines and the Swarm Lord, to Hive Tyrants and their giant battle fleets, and even something as crazy as the Hierophant Bio Titan. The Tyranids come in all forms and sizes depending on what they require. They are extremely good at anti-biological weaponry. There is no way you can plague them or blight them. They have extremely strong armor, uh, carapaces and such. Tyranids are, are nigh perfect organisms and are pretty spooky when it comes down to how they handle all of their genetic material. Keep feeding them, they'll keep evolving. They keep on creating new horrifying organisms to spread across the galaxy. And you know what the most terrifying part of the Tyranids is? We might be surrounded. There have been like around six or seven Tyranid Hive fleets, Behemoth, Kronos, all these different kinds of Hive fleets, and they've all arrived in the galaxy from different points. Different sections of the Milky Way galaxy have had different Tyranids come through. And that is horrifying, because as far as we know, we could just be surrounded on all sides by... Okay. Sorry, I got lost. I got lost in that. So there's a, a huge amount of these things just everywhere. Yeah, I guess they're not evil, but still, that's they want to eat everything and everyone and create more. Like, what would be the end goal for them? Just to eat everything. So if everything's gone and there's no new things and goal destruction i guess right that's just and there's just that and then it's they eat each other until they're gone i mean think about think about that for a second so they just eat everything and everyone they're all wiped out then it's just them and then they're eating each other and then end of end of life kind of a thing it kind of sounds um like an apocalyptic swarm, if you will. I mean, really. And then we're surrounded on all sides. There's potential of that. That is terrifying. Terrifying. Because I... I don't know that much about them, but... I think they eat people alive, if I'm not mistaken. If they can. Not that it really matters, I guess. Being eaten in any sort of fashion is not fun. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a good time. My Tyranids. The only reason you may not hear a whole lot about Tyranids is because it's a little bit hard to have a bunch of story off of one hive mind genocidal monsters. All these giant bugs swarming in, killing and eating everybody and evolving. Oh, I mean, as cool as there are, there's some cool characters, the Swarm Lord, Old One-Eye. You can't really have a whole bunch of major character-based stories around them. As awesome as they are, they're simple. They want to eat you. They want to eat you and absorb your biomass. They are simple bugs. If you want something a little more complex, Talk gene stealer cults. I can have all the pot I want, I get around faster than walking, and wherever I need a seat, I can just sit on my balls. <laughs> gene stealer cults are a <laughs> That was good. South Park moment. Special brain of Tyranid that can slowly infect themselves into different kinds of society. And by infecting them, they can rise up to where they all pray and believe in these real like regular humans pray and believe into their Tyranid hive mind gods. And these brood lords and I think they're called patriarchs, all can turn an entire world 
all based into gene stealers. And these are called gene stealer cults. An entire hive world of the Imperium can be turned into nothing but servants of the Tyranid masters just by infecting them and screwing with their genetic code a little bit. They also have this cool like Mad Max look which is really neat. They are definitely one of the bigger threats to the Imperium besides Chaos. I keep saying biggest threat to the Imperium. They're up there though, because you, Dingus, stepped on a bug in middle school. <laughs> Asshole. There is a cancer eating at the Imperium. With each decade, it advances deeper, leaving drained, dead worlds in its wake. This horror, this abomination, has thought and purpose that functions on an unimaginable galactic scale. And all we can do is to try to stop the swarms of bioengineer monsters it unleashes upon us by instinct. We have given the horror a name to salvage our fears. We call it the Tyranid Race. But if it is aware of us, it must know us as nothing but prey. Tyranids, they're cool. But are they as cool as the orcs? Oh, do I have? Every swing's gone red. That means I'm We're just super fast. Orcs, 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 orcs. I fucking love orcs. So yes, Hell the, yeah. the green monsters, the green tide. I always, I love in the the old games when they talk the the. Cagney, weird little, I, I think that's the word, the weird little accent that they have. Biggest orc is strongest. It's one of my favorite. <laughs> They're just so dumb. And then they talk so crazy. It's one of my favorite. I think they they might be up there with one of my favorite uh, factions so far, just from what I know about them in the game. Because it's, listening to them is so much fun. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> the green skins. These orcs, they are in fact a race in 40k. The orcs are as exactly what you expect them. They have archaic weapons, they're big boys, they have axes, and they have got big old teeth and they want to kill everything, and there are so many of them. The only reason they haven't taken over the entire galaxy is they can't, can't stop murdering each other. Orcs are so cool. Orcs don't have philosophy. Orcs don't have nope. existential crisis. What matters is who's the biggest orc. You listen to that guy, because he the biggest orc. He big orc, big orc knows best. You win through the power of imagination. Of all the races I have battled throughout the galaxy, the orc is the hardest to comprehend. They wage war with machines that should not work, care little for strategic gains, and are just as likely to slaughter each other as the enemy. How does one battle an enemy that defies all logic? As an orc, you're, you're enjoying life. You're enjoying the life you're given. Your whole life and job and purpose is to get up and beat each other to death because you can. The biggest orc is the man who understands everything. He is the boss. And orcs have this really weird, like, big, dumb, stereotype British accent. Yes. Yes. I love it. I love it. And I love that just... Just because he's the biggest and strongest orc, that means he's the boss. <laughs> it's just like, he's not the smartest though. No, but he's the biggest. And he'll kill you if you don't listen to him. <laughs> and, just which is ridiculous. just hilarious. Uh, and I like that he's talking about how there's, all their shit shouldn't work at all, but that just works. It's so crazy that, because like everything that I've seen is just cobbled together it's it's they're one of my favorite i can say just being um just so cool that they're violent they're crazy they like to hurt each other just as much as they like to help hurt other people which what does that say about me i'm not a bad guy i don't know and but then like their shit doesn't like seem like it should function but it functions and then they got the british accent that's just so like crazy like it's a almost like a peasant like british accent don't don't come for me on that one but it's it's a funny accent um uh, not something that you'd hear from like i guess a upper class in their society it's just is they're 
they're awesome. It's to me. Those are orcs. You're, you fight. You like to fight. Your whole purpose is to fight. You wage war because you want to wage war. You got your boss over there and you better listen to the boss because if you don't listen to the boss, the boss will squish you and make you an example for the other orcs. And then you can't fight because orc dead. And orc dead is orc dead can't fight because the orc dead. Orcs, they scrap together. I mean, look at that ship back there. It's just all pieces of random shit just put together machines out of parts that don't make any sense and because they right. believe they have the mental imagination that that machine will run it'll run if that machine's out of gas you're driving that machine with your fellow orcs and the biggest orc is behind the wheel and you run out of gas some orc behind you like oh oh zog we're out of gas and the big orc is like no we're not I filled the fucking gas tank up earlier and all the other orcs are like, oh yeah, I, we, you did do that. And then you turn the, the fucking mech back on and it works again. Does it have gas? Probably not, but it works. The power of imagination. Yeah. They paint things red because it makes them think that goes faster. They paint things purple because it's the sneakiest color. You want to know why? You ever seen a purple orc? <laughs> didn't fucking think so. Orcs are also like ancient as hell. They're back in the Eldari time frame. But that, back then they were called Quirks and they were much larger and scarier and far more intelligent. Now they're just orcs and they're big, dumb, and they smack things. But they're pretty spooky. They're not very well armored, but they hit really hard. And it's called the Green Tide because there are so many orcs. There are about as many orcs as there are Tyranids. Maybe more. Who knows? But they keep on, you know, murdering each other, so it's not too bad of an issue. Orcs are entirely comic relief. Their stuff is... I think that might be why I like them, is that they're comic relief. Everything is just so dark in this damn world. You need a little laughter. Here come the orcs. Slap together. That makes no sense. Their vehicles don't work the way they're supposed to, but they work because they think it works, because they imagine that it works. Orcs care only about who is the biggest orc and they will follow the biggest orc. And then if they want to be the biggest orc, they'll challenge the biggest orc. And then when they go and they issue a wa, a wa is just war in orc, they murder everybody and everything in this giant tide of green orcs who are just excited to be hitting something. They don't care that they're hitting Eldar or the Imperium or Tau or anyone in between. They're just so they get to beat shit up. That's orcs. And on the tabletop, they are a total coin flip and they're really fun. I have never met a salty orc player. I have never met someone who plays orcs and is ever just a bad guy or that guy. Orc players have this kind of fun to them because when you play them, you are completely submitting yourself to RNG. So here's the thing. Guardsmen, Imperial Guardsmen, when they shoot, they roll a dice and on a four up, they'll hit their target. They have a 50% chance. Space Marines, pretty good. They hit on a three or higher because they're well-trained. Adeptus Custodians, they hit on twos because they're just super well-trained. Orcs, they hit on a five or higher. But if they Whoa. roll a six, they get to make another shot with anything from the dinkiest pistol to the biggest rocket launcher. It doesn't matter. Half of their stuff will blow up on a whim. One of their medics, if you roll a one to heal someone, you fuck up your surgery and you just kill an orc. <laughs> They're so <laughs> wacky and silly. But the thing is, is if you roll well, you roll high and you keep rolling high, you are going to crush people. And if you don't, you lose. I mean, that's what you get when you play orcs. That's what happens when you play orc. It's a coin flip. Which is why you can't be a salty bitch when you play orcs, because things won't go your way. It's just the roll of the dice. You're playing a dice game. But if you're going to have fun, and you want to be stupid, and you want to be silly, you're going to play some damn orcs. But on the opposite side of the fun part of this, let's talk about the Necrons. The Necrons are spooky, scary skeletons and very grimdark again. They have a much more fleshed out lore than before. Back in the day, they were just undead Egyptian space terminators, and they still look that way. But see, when I started, when we were playing, I still, I gotta start streaming that. Uh, Dawn of War three, two or three, whenever these were in introduced, they were the most annoying. Fucking, I, I would, oh. They were just a 
pain in the ass to fight most of the time in that game because they would respawn. They would just keep they not even respawn. What would the like they revive? One guy would come through and just revive the soldiers, and then you'd have to kill them all over again and hope that you had enough guys and you didn't need to sit there and uh, build a whole bunch more units, a whole bunch more space marines just to keep going because they'd come in there and they just fuck you on up. <laughs> so I'm not a huge... It, it's, it was a pain in the ass because they were slow. So when you were playing with these guys in the game just slow and it would take a while to build up an army and then you can go for a while but then once you once they all died you could resurrect them but it wasn't like an immediate thing you'd have to send in your uh your commanding unit to go do that and yeah you could pop back up inside their base but they were so slow that the space marines or whatever else you were fighting they could come into your base and just destroy and wipe out everything in your base and then you'd start all over again so it would be fucking annoying <laughs> that's the one thing i remember about the necrons is annoying fucking annoying by the way i'm cursing a lot i'm sorry i'm excited i'm having a good time but then they actually have a story so way back in the day you had the necron tier kind of see a theme here eldari eldar crork orc necron necron tier so the necron tier were this race of generally kind of shitty people not because they were personally shitty, but because their lives were awful. They were ill-fated to a horrible existence of like radiation and a terrible planet they lived on and everything just really sucked. Being a Necron tier was just really depressing. They really were looking for immortality. They were extremely reliant on the hope that they would eventually find the key to living forever and to stave off this horrible nature that they were thrust upon them. And therefore they could become the most dominant race in the galaxy and they found this group they're called the old ones imagine them kind of like the forerunners in halo or the zelnaga in starcraft right these old ones were these sp strong oh pretty much omnipotent beings and they of course knew the key to immortality so the necrons went to them and said please show us your ways and the old ones said piss off <laughs> not really, they were a lot more humble about it, but they did not want to share their secret of immortality with the Necrons. The Necrons, of course, took this very well and waged war with them, kind of under this united banner. The Necron different dynasties didn't really like each other, but under this one man, the Silent King, he thought the best way to unite his race was to do this giant war legs. with the Old Ones out of spite for them keeping the secret of immortality to them. This was known as the war in heaven. And this is actually like a multi-stage war because during this war in heaven, they discovered the star gods, a whole new race of people known as the Catan or the Catan. These star gods were also very much like old ones, almost omnipotent beings. And they too had the key to immortality. And so the Necrons went to them and said, hey, can you help us? fight off the old ones can you help us kill these old ones you the katan and the katan said yes and in fact we can help provide you with the immortality you so desperately seek so the silent king of the necrons decided to make a pact with the katan to allow them to accept this generous gift of immortality upon them but this of course had yeah. been a horrendous trap and the Necrons were dragged in chains to this biotransference where their flesh was stripped from them, replaced with nothing but a metal hollow shell as their souls were ripped from their body and fed to the Catan. And the Catan fattened up. They got chonk on the souls of the Necrons. As this was their plan all along, they consumed the flesh and souls of the Necron tier and turned them all into unwilling robotic slaves just to serve their will. And then with their newfounded Necron army, they pointed their guns at the old ones and the Catan continued their domination of the stars and their genocide complete and full 
genocide of these old ones. The old ones did their best to stave it off. They even created other races, the Eldari and the Orcs, to try to fight off the horrifying Necron army and the Catan above them. But there was absolutely no possible chance for them. And the old ones were absolutely extinguished across the galaxy. Their entire race completely removed full-on 100% genocide. However, during all this, the Catan, so just infatuated with their victory, started fighting each other for fun, for sport, and for small differences, doesn't matter. The Catan, with these over overpowered people, they're gonna eventually hit each other at some point. And as they began just menially fighting each other, the Eldari and the Orcs actually started pushing on the Catan's borders a little bit, giving them a little bit of a run for their money. And as this continued, this is when the Silent King, who retained his consciousness, decided to leap into action and start a full scale revolt against their Catan masters. And this revolt was bloody as the entire Necron army was surged off to destroy these star gods. They were able to, just after suffering horrendous losses, were able to turn the tide of the war. And they took these Katam and they blasted them. Because as these star gods are unkillable, they were able to break them into thousands of shards and entrap them in giant stasis vaults to now actually be slaves to the Necrons. And with the Necrons having the entirety of their old gods enslaved to them, they realized that soon their race was about to be attacked by the overcoming new races, the Eldari and the Krorks. And so what they did is they retreated into giant stasis tombs in order to preserve their energy and their strength for when one day they would be reawakened and they would be able to rule the galaxy that was rightfully theirs. And then some dingus Adeptus Mechanicus guy diddled with a green console and now the Necrons are back and they see all these primitive races on their lawns and they think get the fuck off of it <laughs> the necrons are back super advanced and they are here to reclaim the galaxy that they so rightfully believe is theirs now on the tabletop they're a lot like that tons of undead egyptian skeleton robots that when they die they just get right back up because they keep on reanimating hard to kill tons of crazy stuff yeah. you can use the katan themselves as units to Whoa. fight with pretty cool. The Necrons are the one of the three major events in 40k. The Horus Heresy, the Fall of the Eldar, and the Awakening of the Necrons are all pretty substantial events. And the Necrons themselves are pretty pretty dang cool as well. Here's a good quote from a wonderful Dawn of War game. Lucky creatures, as long last you have found the tranquility of death. I was like you once, clinging to life and blind to the truth. When I uncovered the truth, I too shuddered and pale with fear. Deep in these catacombs, I was remade. Here, my brethren slumbered for eons while the living grew like weed. My lord knew this day would come. He had plans for us all. We would purge this world once more. So come, poor victims of life. We will grant you tranquility in these crypts. Kronos will be a tomb world once more. Necrons mm. are also pretty smug. Trays in the Infinite especially, a little, <laughs> little dickhead. But speaking of dickheads, last race, oh, okay. let's talk the Tau. Let's take a minute here. So I got really wrapped up into that. Um, that was a lot of information that he just threw out there. But yes, so slow moving. I did not know that you could have Catan. Well, not that I didn't even know about Catan until now, but like that's cool that you can have the enslaved Catan as a unit in the game, like the tabletop. That's pretty cool. Uh, from what I know though, at least what I remember from the original game, like I said, slow moving, annoying, annoying to fight the Necrons. Now these guys, the Tau, I'm sorry. I keep like just, going off like listening to this but it's so intriguing um trying to get all this memory back from this game these guys i know that they're always like greater good greater good this is probably um this was one of my least favorite factions to play in that game just because they were kind of slow and they didn't hit very hard um i was always space marine space marine space marine necron sometimes when i 
wanted to change up, but Space Marines and Orcs were my jam because Orcs are fun. Orcs are always fun. Bricky said it himself. Lots of fun. Well, let's learn more about these guys. We made a fucking walkie. The exact formation of the <laughs> Tau got, Empire. He's got anime girl legs. Is not entirely understood. However, a long, long time ago, many thousands of years ago, uh, in the 40k world that is, some imperial navigation vessels were going around through different areas and they saw a primitive race, blue people, smacking each other with sticks and stones. They thought, nah, dumb Xenos race who gives a shit, and they bailed. Then this giant warp storm occurred right in that major area, unable to be breached. Then, once that warp storm 6,000 years later subsided, hello, those little sticks. Well, they decided to actually have no war of any kind and all just unite together under one flag of the Tau Empire. And now they have gigantic starships and Gundam robots and lasers and railguns and mechs, and they are here to ruin your day for the greater good. That is generally the Tau Empire. That was also an annoying quote they used to just say all the time, for the greater good. It's like, shut up. Uh, they have this kind of feeling of this homogenous group. All species can go underneath the banner of the greater good. The greater good is their idea of the fundamental increase and help of all. In fact, they are most likely the most like the covenant in Halo where they have the overarching prophets, being the ethereals, who are actually kind of dicks and, and like to pull at strings a little bit, but then you have all these different races directly underneath them, and they all work together in this big group as this large, foreboding race that tries to spread their weirdly pseudo-religious influence across the galaxy. The alien is not intrinsically evil. Do not hate him. Pity him, his ignorance. Seek to understand his differences and equate him with his inadequacies. Only then will he accept his place in the greater good. That is generally the Tau. And if you're kind of wondering like what their mainly big shtick is, well, they're all about big robots and mechs. They have laser rifles and rail guns. They got giant mechs with tons of missile pods and heavy rail rifles and rail guns and burst cannons and ion accelerators and void shields. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, they don't, their armor and stuff looks pretty cool. I just remember them being annoying. <laughs> that's that's kind of how it was for Dawn of War 2, I believe. It was like, I remember Space Marines always cool, but the new races were somewhat annoying, especially these guys, because when you clicked on them, they'd always say for the greater good. And when you sent them somewhere to go do something else, it was for the greater good. I also remember I got wrecked a lot trying to play their campaign it was just a pain in the ass because that one you could choose i think in dawn of war 2 you could choose you know what what your main army faction was and then try to take over a globe a world um instead of just having to be forced to play the space marines like you were in dawn of war um i mean they're cool their quotes are annoying though just got old and all this stuff and that is generally what the Tau is all about but you're probably thinking bricky this doesn't sound that evil this doesn't sound very grim no, dark warhammer sound. And you'd be right. The Tau Empire really don't have that much of a horrifying, grim, dark style like everybody else. They're much more younger, new age thing. In fact, they're probably a lot less evil and a lot even better than they are now back in the day because they liked having like that good guy faction. But a lot of us who really liked the, the dark, depressing style of Warhammer yeah. didn't really like it that much. So see, the Tau get a lot of hate and a lot of that hate is- And I was just talking about how much I don't. <laughs> I, I like him to a point. Isn't necessarily unjustified. It's mainly from a tabletop perspective, but as you can see from all the visuals I've shown you recently, they don't really fit in the 40K universe very well. They lack that super dark, dramatic, kind of high gothic level the Imperium has. They don't have the weird kind of like grungy stuff that Chaos or say the Orcs do. And the Necrons and the Eldar have their own specific style as well. The Tau really do look like something out of Gundam. Yeah. And while it isn't necessarily a bad thing, it does definitely not fit too well. There's that. 
there's also the tabletop problem. Uh, in tabletop, Tau are horrible at melee combat, but exceptionally good at ranged combat. So they blast everyone from really, really far away, and they have a million rules to make it so that it's nearly impossible for you to get into melee combat. So it basically just forces you to bottleneck the game into one specific gameplay style, which is gun to gun. And if you're doing gun to gun, they're gonna win every time because they're the Tau, and the Tau are really damn good at shooting. So it's one of those things that make the Tau generally rather hated and a lot of different reasons uh, for that, uh, both from style and such. But this is actually one of the things I wanted to end this video with, is that the Tau, while they have their issues, you should not be discouraged from playing them. I'll make plenty of Tau weeaboo jokes, of course I will, but it's all generally in good fun. <laughs> Anyone who legitimately doesn't want you to play a faction is an idiot and you shouldn't be giving them the time of day. You pick what you think is cool and what you like. In Warhammer, especially oh, yeah. now, factions get better and they get worse. They grow and then they fall. You should only be playing what you think is cool. You like the look, you like the models. If you're talking tabletop, Top, that is what you should be going for every time is what you think is badass because things change all the time but the universe of Warhammer has so much going for it every faction has something interesting every character has a story and there's a million stories to be told the universe is vast and exciting and while it is dark depressing and horrible that is the damn charm and out of everything I've told you in these two videos is there anything you could take away is the reason why so many of us are so into this series and why we like it so much. Because with so much variety, such an expansive universe, and so much that can be done, you can find yourself having a pretty great time. Bricky was very right. Anything that would stop you from playing a certain faction, you shouldn't be. Oh, you should. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hooch knows about that. He's a good boy. He's a good boy that knows all about that. I'm going to let you outside in a second, dude. Can we wrap this up real quick? Anyway, Bricky is correct. If you are playing a game and somebody doesn't want you to play that certain game with a certain race or a certain faction or what have you, probably not worth your time. He went... Bricky went off. He showed us a lot of cool stuff, a lot of stuff I didn't know. Um... I'm very happy. I am so excited to be back doing this again. Uh, <laughs> you say hi. You say hi like a good boy. You can see all the crap we have back over here. Well, with bang this time. So Bricky is correct. I'm excited to eventually, hopefully, be able to play this game. The tabletop game at some point in my life. Um, I have been looking at some figures... I haven't figured out where I want to go with that. Um, as far as like, do I want to get space Marines? Do I want to get the orcs? Um, I don't know. I don't know yet where I want to go as far as like figuring paintings and stuff. I'm probably going to be really bad at it <laughs> just because my patience level is not high. I have ADHD. Anyway, um, I am so happy to be back. I'm scattered everywhere. I missed you guys a lot. And I'm sorry I was gone. Um, I'm going to try to not let that happen again.